to begin by asking everyone here and present today a very simple question. What did you eat? What did you, <laughs> what did you eat and how did it get there? <laughs> it seems like a very simple question, but it's something that we overlook a lot. We, don't, uh, we tend not to take into consideration how the things that we eat got into our plates in the first place. We don't tend to take into consideration the effect that our consumption has on the environment. And that's what I will be speaking on today. The World Health Organization has outlined five keys to implement food safety in homes for consumers. Namely, choose, clean, separate, cook, and keep. These are very simple words. But the one that caught my attention the most was the very first one, choose. Choose your raw materials wisely. And it struck me that for us to be able to choose in the first place, there needs to be a variety to choose from. In order to make a choice, there has to be something to choose from. And I was thinking, well, what about in, uh, as, the minister, as the minister had said, what about the cases that are abnormal? What about in cases where we have nothing to choose from and we just take what's best? What if due to some unforeseen circumstance, we just have to go with what we have? Or what if due to some foreseen circumstance, which we chose to blindly ignore, we have to go with what we have? 40% of our planet is used as farmland. So from that stat alone, one can deduce that agriculture is very important. For agriculture to thrive as a industry, it needs stability. It needs, it needs to be predictable and it needs to be in a set pattern. These words, you'll usually see them in reference to the definition of climate. So it should come as no surprise to all the agricultural experts and agricultural science students here that climate affects agriculture. It seems like a very simple piece of information to know and to have and to understand but because of its simplicity, it is often overlooked in the same way that it was overlooked in today's celebration. We did not see one speaker speak about climate change and its effect on agriculture. And this is not to condemn or to patronize the ministry or the various uh, presenters today, but rather I'd like to thank you because you've given me an opportunity to speak on something that I'm very passionate about. Climate change can affect the agricultural sector in uh, many ways, but I'd like to outline four. The first one being temperature. Similar to what we humans would feel first, this would be what the crops would feel first. You would see a sharp increase and then a very steep fall in production. Similarly, this affects the livestock. Uh, Heat-related uh, stress can greatly, uh, greatly decrease the amount of animal pregnancies, decrease the amount of milk produced, and uh, increase the time needed to get the animals to its market weight. And these problems itself can be exacerbated by the second point, water, or lack thereof. Um, as everyone knows, with water and agriculture, it's a very complex relationship. It's all about the right amount at the right time. And just everything needs to be right. And because nature is unpredictable, this is why we have irrigation systems in place. So what would happen in an extreme case where there is a drought or a heat wave and these irrigation systems do not work? Bring me to my third point, extreme weather conditions. Again, droughts and heat waves, torrential rain, salt water intrusion, these things can all greatly impact agriculture and not for the better. These pieces of a puzzle all come together to point to the main driver of climate change, which is carbon and the, its increased amount within the atmosphere. Although carbon is great for plants, as we all know, um, and, an abundance of it can increase the growth of invasive pests and diseases, and that can decrease the nutritional value of the foods that we plant. In short, climate change directly affects the safety of our food, and in turn, this affects our health. This poses a very great challenge to the Ministry of Agriculture and to the various food industries. How do they, as an industry, provide and produce enough food for a growing population with a small piece of land that they have, and how do they do so in a way that is efficient and sustainable. And because it is such a big challenge and it is such a big issue, it simply cannot be tackled alone. In the words of my fellow orator from RKS, this needs collaboration. 
This needs uh, forums and settings such as this, where we incorporate government and agriculture and the young innovative minds of students to come together to have discourse over this kind of issue. This needs cooperation. We must include our local industries. This needs commitment. Again, in the words of our minister, we need to be practical about the solutions that we have. Convention, this needs a, re a revolution. The past agricultural revolution was one of expansion and exploitation. It was one of greed and of the need for more. But this new revolution needs to be green. Conventional farming involves clearing a piece of land, ridding it of all any and any kind of biodiversity, and planting one kind of crop. Again, this is not to patronize or condemn those that do practice this kind, but this is to encourage you to become innovative and to find new ways. We must incorporate our traditional knowledge, the efficiency of technology, rural experiences, and innovation. We must not only export our local fruits and vegetables, but export our local knowledge and act globally. To conclude, I'd like to leave us with a quote by Stuart Udall, who was a famous American environmentalist and, environmentalist and naturalist, who once said, a plan to conserve water and air, wildlife and the wilderness is a plan to conserve mankind. Thank you.